What up, y'all? John Murray here, and I want to say thank you for tuning in to the YouTube playback of my Facebook Live series, Let's Talk Live. Now, because this version is not live, you won't be a part of the interactive conversation, so don't look for a shout-out. You won't be getting one. However, enjoy the Hot Topics dialogue and follow me on Facebook at John Murray World. That's J-A-W-N-M-U-R-R-A-Y World, so that you can catch a live broadcast and be a part of the conversation. Now, let's join Let's Talk Live, already in progress. Check it out. Uh, tonight, I am drinking um, uh, green tea with lemonade uh, from Starbucks. It's one of my go-tos. Um, uh, so yeah, um, um, that's what I'm drinking tonight. Oh, and I got a snack tonight, because I was cooking yesterday. I made some pasta, uh, and I made some cupcakes. My favorite kind, too. I don't need to be eating all this stuff, but, uh, show us good! Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk to y'all about that. Um, hey, Lori A. Smith. So, and if you have not, please, please, um, hit that share button for me, you know. It would make a brother very happy if you did. I need to, something else in here, see, I didn't even realize that. Uh, get my stuff together for some things I want to share with you guys. Uh, uh, Ruth Longsworth said, come on, Starbucks, give John the hookup. Listen, Starbucks better come through. Start doing something. We gotta figure something out, you know. Vicky Violet Clark, my girl is in the house. So listen, uh, last week after we guys did, after we did uh, Let's Talk Live, watching my TV and turned on the Good Wendy Williams show, and there was in Vogue. I was very impressed um, seeing uh, in Vogue, you know, perform a medley of their hits. They did a great interview. I thought. You know, the ladies look nice. Then I was in the grocery store picking up some groceries because I told y'all I, I cooked last night. Came across the People magazine with um, uh, Prince Harry and our soon-to-be black princess Meghan Markle from one of my favorite shows, Suits, on the cover. So I decided to pick this joint up and turn inside and look. There was In Vogue again. Look at In Vogue. You know, it, veteran artists don't usually get this kind of love. So the fact that, you know, that, you know, In Vogue is in here. They got on their little sequence outfits and stuff. Look at that. Go ahead, In Vogue. Uh, and it's, you know, it's the new In Vogue. It's Terry Ellis. It's Cindy uh, Heron and um, Rona Bennett. And here's the cool thing. I mean, it's still new to some people. But Rona Bennett has been in the group like, 12 years now, like, she had her own career uh, prior to this, uh, you know, uh, she had a, a solo record deal with Rodney Jerkins, she was on the Jamie Foxx show, um, um, you know, uh, and became really popular singing them jingles with him in the marketing firm, and, uh, you know, she's like a Disney kid, so, it was cool to see them there, and, and oh, by the way, is these two pages, extensive article, and another page, look at them. The ladies look good, too. And they got a video interview with them on, on the website. So, kudos to Involve. But, oh, that's not all that's in um, the People magazine. My good friend, Sunny Hostin from The View is here. Look at Sunny. They got her house in here. Hey, Sunny in her house. Look at it. All of that. That's her that's her kids and her husband. So kudos to Sunny Hostin from uh, from The View. Being in the People magazine. So yeah. So yeah, this People magazine's on newsstands now. Check it out if you would like. Um and uh yeah, I forgot to uh add this to the to the topic at hand, but uh I want to talk a little bit about Cardi B. Um, you know, Cardi B's having a good moment, you know? She's on uh, 
on the Tonight Show and uh, when she co-hosted, the first time they've ever had a co-host on for the whole show. I'm making an adjustment real quick. Hold on, y'all. Uh, Alright, there we go. Um, yeah, she's on the Tonight Show. Um, she was on SNL this weekend. She finally announced her baby, which was the worst kept secret in Hollywood uh, and in the music industry. But, um, you know, she did this interview with GQ magazine that's getting a lot of attention. And in it, she revealed that she had gotten $800 illegal butt injections from a basement doctor uh, in Queens, New York. And, when, uh, and then after she got the illegal butt injections, they leaked for five days. And then she uh, was going to go back for a second round of injections only to find out that the lady was no longer there because somebody had died on the table. Well, you know, because I pay attention to pop culture, because that's what you do when you're a pop culture expert. Um, uh, I remember the woman, the story about the woman who died on the table of the doctor in Queens. She was a woman that used to work at BET, and apparently she was obsessed with Nicki Minaj's butt, so she went to this illegal uh, doctor to, I'm sorry, doctor to get these illegal butt injections, and she died. And so, you know... I, I kind of wish that Cardi B wouldn't have maybe necessarily shared that story because what happens is because she's having such a good moment, there, there are a lot of impressionable young girls out here who are body conscious, who have low self-esteem, and they then might now go out and try to explore the illegal butt injection situation. I know Cardi, the reason she shared the story was to say that it wasn't a good thing, but you got to be careful about oversharing. And uh, speaking of oversharing, she also reveals her gang affiliation. Um in the article as well. So it just was, you know, um, it just was a lot, you know. For somebody who's got a CD out called Invasion of Privacy and talking about how people want to be in her business, she sure is sharing a lot, a lot of her business. And um, anybody who's thinking about getting any of those illegal butt injections or that low rent, uh, illegal pedestrian plastic surgery, you really should get, uh, there's a, um, uh, uh, um, an edition of Essence magazine that had a woman in there who like lost her limbs trying to get the perfect uh, bodacious body. And I remember turning through the Essence not knowing this article was in there. And here's this woman with her nubs and I mean, it's nubs at the bottom and nubs at the top. She's just sitting there on the couch. It caught me off guard. I threw the magazine. I was like, ah! Because I, you know, I wasn't expecting it. It was like watching a little bit of a horror show. But it was her horror show, all for the sake of trying. To get, uh, you know, one of them hip hop Atlanta store bought bodies. So, uh, you know, it's just, you know. Uh, uh, R&B Mel says she needs to hire someone to help her with what to say and what not to say during interviews. She has a whole team around her. So it's not about hiring somebody, uh, it's about just not saying certain things. So uh, she has a publicist, she's signed to a major record company. There's a whole machine around her. But the reality is that even with a machine, uh, what's in a person is going to come out of them. If you don't believe it, ask Whitney Houston. They dressed it up, cleaned it up for as long as they could. But at some point, that girl from East Orange, New Jersey, showed up and was talking about hell to the no and the king of R&B and pulling Dookie out of Bobby Brown's tail. So, you know, what's in you going to come out of you, you know, until you learn to evolve and, and, and grow. And that's what this journey really should be about. So I hope uh, Cardi B turns the corner because... You know. You know. So, yeah. Um, and then uh, it was trending earlier, but have you, uh, have you seen the new Janelle Monet video? Woo. Um, yeah. Uh, it was a lot. So the song is called Pink. And, um... It's a female empowerment song about uh, a particular part of the woman's genitalia. And she's wearing clothes that uh, emulate that part of the body. And uh, they're drawing uh, in like the sand and recreating that part of the body. And it just, yeah, I mean, if you are fasting from pornography, if you are a sex addict if you um 
have a crazy appetite for, um, um, you know, snacking on parts of the body. That video is probably something that you should steer very clear of because it's going to push you into a, a bad place. Um, it's just, it, whew, it was, uh, it was very pink. Mm. Ah, pun intended. So, yeah, you know, watch that video uh, at your own discretion. But uh, it just was, uh, yeah. So, you know, Janelle Monae got a new song out. I don't, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's controversial, all right? Uh, so, yeah. Um... All right, so yeah, I told y'all I, I cooked last night, so I made German chocolate cake cupcakes. It's my favorite kind of cake, German chocolate cake, so it was really good. I ain't even going to act like I'm snack tasting it for the first time, because I don't ate like four of them already, so. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. Just delicious, and I don't have a napkin. Oh, because you have a tissue. Um. Mm. So I needed a snack break. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So wonderful. Lucinda Moses, she almost bit her screen. Hey, have a taste. Look, look. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 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 Alright. Oh, hold on. Ooh. I did have a nap in there, bro. Alright, that was wonderful. Quite wonderful. Uh Okay, so over the weekend, you know, I've been off the road for uh I've been off the road for a week and a half now. Which has been very refreshing because I've had a very busy uh, travel start to the year. As you guys know, because I think I took like four weeks off from doing Let's Talk Live. I was going so crazy. Um, Angela McKinney said, am I going to share my cupcake recipe? Yes. Go to the grocery store. Get a box of German chocolate cake. Uh, Store-bought cake mix. Um, and... Uh, uh, and, uh, I think I used the Duncan Hines and then, inst uh, uh, add one extra egg and instead of water, use, uh, whole milk. I use lactate because I try to use the milk without the lactose in it. And, uh, and instead of oil, um, use butter, but double the amount that they asked for. And, uh, that's my recipe. Just taking a store-bought cake and making it a little better. A little box cake situation. So, all right. So, over the weekend, I was looking for something. Um, and I don't, I don't have it here, so I have to do that, do that part another day. But I was looking for something, and I went into, like, one of my um, um, uh, storage closets. And I hadn't been in that storage closet in a long time. And I forgot I had these plastic containers in there with like just a whole bunch of things. And so, um, 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 and so I started going through some of these things and really just took me down memory lane. So I figured I would share some of them with you today and like talk to you about different things that I found in these different containers. And, and I think I'm going to do this, um, every couple of weeks or so, or maybe the next couple of weeks at least. But, um. Yeah, so I found my old Trapper Keeper from high school. Look at this. I hate the way the light is. Okay, maybe, oh, on this side the light is better. So this is my old Trapper Keeper. This is Kelly S. Kelly S. Williams, a.k.a. Laura from Family Matters. Um, I had her photo in my Trapper Keeper because I used to have the biggest crush on Kelly S. Williams. Um, so I found my old Trapper Keeper, and... Um, so in it, I found like my old resumes when I was trying to find, uh, jobs right out of high school, you know, for my summer jobs while I was in college, 
Uh, uh oh. What is this? Oh. Oh yeah, I helped a couple of my friends do their um their resumes. Um, it just was really something. So yeah, I was, a, was pleasantly surprised to run into this. Uh, my old trapper keeper. So yeah. Um. Then what else did I find? Oh. Now this kind of took me out of here. Mm, mm, I mean, it really took me out of here. So, I guess this is from my uh, high school years. And I found this old notebook. And I was like, what is in this old notebook? So, um, I forgot what the lighting has to do like this. So, I opened up the notebook. And I found this thing called Street Talk. See, even in high school, I wanted to work in television. Um, and I... Uh, wanted to have a talk show called Street Talk. And I had written out, like, my guest listing on the talk show, as though I had the talk show, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty. I was bored. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four... Oh, basically, it goes on. Like, I have the end of the first season. Then I start booking my guests for the second season. So, um, it was amazing. Like, like on my very first guest. Uh, now, mind you, I was in high school. So, this was, um, this was the late 90s. Uh, my first guest was going to be Pat LaBelle and Whoopi Goldberg. Then on my second show, my second guest was going to be Salt and Pepper. Then on my third show... Uh, my guest was going to be Albie Shore and Miss America. I don't even know who Miss America was at the time. Uh, on my third show, my guest was going to be Lisa Stansfield and Shirley Ralph. I guess she was on Moesha at the time. And then on my Friday show, the guest was going to be New Edition. Because, you know, I've been rocking with New Edition a long time. And then on the following week, but this is so fun. The following week, um... My first guest was going to be Dionne Warwick and, and Luther Vandross. They was coming on the show together. And then the next day, Tempest Bledsoe and Keisha Knight Pulliam. Oh, okay. I guess they was coming on to promote the Cosby show. And then uh, Wednesday, Biz Marquis and Harry Anderson. Who is Harry Anderson? Uh, then uh, on my Thursday show, Arsenio Hall and Paula Abdul. All right. Then on my Friday show, it's going to be Eddie Murphy and Jasmine Guy. Ain't that something? I had, on one show, I had Tina Turner and Kirk Cameron. This is before I knew Kirk Cameron was one of them crazy evangelicals. Um, Heavy D and the Boys was going to be on one of my, oh, Heavy D. That was my cousin Maurice's favorite rapper. Uh, I mean, this was really something. So that, that kind of touched me. Like, I, I had a moment, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Tyra Hill said Harry Anderson was a night court judge. See, you better than me. So, yeah, so that was that. Then, you know, because I work in entertainment, once I got into the entertainment industry, uh, it was all kind of things that, you know, people send you and stuff. So, I started coming across all type of old things. So, uh, first thing I found was this invitation I got from Seagram's Gin and Juice. Um, uh, for the Doug Banks show. Seagram's Gin, uh, 107.5 WBLS and ABC Radio Networks cordially invite you and the guests to turn the party on in celebration of Doug Bank Morning Show's 5th anniversary, Wednesday, June 18, 2003, 7 p.m. to 12 midnight at the legendary Copacabana on West 34th Street in New York City. Sounds by Biz Marquee and DJ Memo and live performances. Invite is non-transferable, black tie or semi-formal. Uh, and look at this. This was a nice invite. And, oh, I, I always forget about this. So, the Doug Banks Morning Show celebrating five years together. It was Doug Banks, Dee Dee McGuire, 
and Ricky Smiley and Coco. I remember Coco. Wow, look at this. And I always forget that Ricky used to be on Doug Banks' morning show. So I used to do a segment um, on uh, um, on the Doug Banks uh, morning show. So it just was, you know, to be, you know, and I went to the party. It was really nice. And the part that I remembered upon looking at this invitation was that it was at this party that I almost got into. Did it, did it talk or something? What is this? I almost got into a fight with an actor who was on a hit cable show because let's just say he said something sideways and I caught him and uh, it was almost an incident. So uh, thanks to Egypt Sherrod for making sure that that didn't go down that way. So then I found uh, the first year I went to the BET Awards was 2004 and I found the book bag that they gave me from the 2004 BET Award. I'm telling you, I had these plastic containers that had all this old industry stuff in it. This is a nice book bag. I'm going to pull this thing out. And they had, uh, I guess this is the pouch for my two-way pager, maybe? Two-way pager? Uh, or a little tiny cell phone, but I think it was maybe a pager, a sidekick, a beeper, something. Ain't that something? Look at this book bag. Ain't it something? But and that wasn't the only book bag. Then I also had a book bag from Tommy Boy Gospel. Tommy Boy Records had launched a gospel label and they had uh, Kim Burrell on it. And yeah, yeah, a little book bag. I probably got this at the Gospel Music Workshop of America somewhere. Uh, Michael Steeler Babe Wood said, do I speak to the actor today or are you still salty with him? We ended up making up. Uh, and he apologized for what went down. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, and then I found, I had a whole box just full of, like, lanyards and, uh, and all kinds of things. And, um, uh, and if you're just joining in, I'm taking a, a, a walk down memory lane, um, uh, talking about, um, uh, um, some things I found while spring cleaning. So, um, okay, I don't remember what that one was. Um, oh, this was the season I went to, uh, BET's Comic View. Uh, I was hanging out backstage, Cheryl Underwood was hosting. Uh, that was that. Then I found a lanyard from, oh, I got a, a marker on it too. From Expedition Everest, I went to the grand opening at uh, at Walt Disney World in Orlando. So this is my name badge uh, that I had for that. Uh, let me see here. Oh, this is when. Uh, a lanyard. So, okay, before I joined the Tom Jordan Morning Show, they used to invite me um, uh, to uh, events as a guest. And um, so this was the year that I went to the Tom Jordan Family Reunion down in Orlando. And the event ended up, they had one night of events and then they had to cancel everything else because of the hurricane. And we had to get bussed overnight to Atlanta. And um, it was a crazy experience. Crazy experience. And... Oh my goodness. Okay, so this was a, a lanyard from this Nabob event that I went to as a guest of BMI. Uh, and they honored uh, Nabob, the National Association of Broadcasters. The National Association of Broadcasters of... Something, NABOB, broadcasting organization, radio stuff, whatever. So they were honoring um, Etta James and Albertina Walker. They had a concert with Aretha Franklin. Um, and then they were also saluting Maya Angelou, Terrence Howard, Robert L. Johnson, that's Bob Johnson, Alicia Keys, and S. Epatha Murkison. And so Steve Harvey hosted this night. And I remember that Dorothy Norwood was sitting on the dais 
Um, 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 and Steve Harvey kept cursing and kept going, oh, I'm so sorry, Sister Norwood. I'm so sorry, Sister Albertina Walker. And they kept going, <laughs> and I'm thinking about myself, you keep apologizing to them. They probably up there cussing more than you because them two ladies could cuss. Um, uh, okay, this is from, then this was from, what year was this? 2006. One of my first times at the Essence Festival. So it was my VIP tickets and my badge and my access. And there was another badge I just found uh, for all the... So McDonald's had a suite and I went to their suite that year with just a lot of good stuff. So, yeah. Then, you know, I saw, you know, oh, a couple other things. Um, uh, there was... Um, they opened up the club Love here in DC, which is now becoming City Winery. Uh, but this was like I, this was what you got to come in the grand opening here in DC. Uh, that means a lot to the people here in DC. So yeah, that was that. Then, uh, so back in the back in the day when artists used to come out, they used to send um, press kits out on. Um, the different artists. So this, I found this press kit for uh, the singer, TV host, uh, social media personality, Lexi. She was signed to Evander Holyfield's record company, Real Deal Records. Look at Lexi. Look like, she like uh, Lexi J. Blige. And a little, uh, a little uh, LL Cool J Kango on her baggy jeans. She giving you a Leah vibe with the clothes. Go ahead, Lexi. Uh, so you yeah, got her little bio in here. Before the world knew her as Lexi, Alexis Nucleus received her musical baptism as a child, singing in the Ohio-based Pentecostal church where her grandfather served as pastor. Go ahead, Lexi. So yeah, so that was that. Then uh, I had a pair of socks from the uh, movie Semi-Pro. Remember Andre 3000 was in this movie with Will Ferrell? So I got, I ain't never even worn these socks. They still in the bag. Look at them. Uh, uh, Belinda Bass says, what is sent now instead of to prepare? An email is sent now. Um, they ain't sending out nothing. Uh, oh, then I got a, um, it's a t-shirt from the movie uh, Code Name Cleaner. That Cedric the Entertainer did with um, uh, Nicolette Sheraton and Lucy Liu. I don't think this movie made no money, though. Here's a t-shirt. Still got that. And then I got some tissues from Celebration of Gospel. From the taping. I guess in case, you, you know, you caught the Holy Ghost and needed to wipe your nose or something. Uh, so there was that. But then, let me tell you couple things um so i found so i used to be very organized as a as a as a teen and a young adult so i found a phone list that i used to have and put up on my wall when i was in college with everybody's telephone numbers on it some of these people might still have the same telephone number very interesting i wonder if there's anybody on here that i um that I still know. I mean, I, I know a lot of them, but like somebody that I forgot that I used to be friends with. Uh, it's, it's all kinds of stuff. Interesting. Some of this stuff is. <laughs> I just found something in here that's about to mess me up. Can't even tell y'all about it. All right, so in addition to that, who remembers Columbia House? You remember Columbia House? This is something. Remember you used to go through these catalogs and you could order your music and decide what you... 
I remember I got introduced to Rasan Patterson and Eric Benet through Columbia House. Something. Oh. Um, oh. Then there was another movie that came out. <laughs> Where is the other? Oh. Uh. King's Ransom. They gave out furry handcuffs. Y'all remember? Who saw King's Ransom? And. Um. Uh, Donald Faison was in it. I want to say Cat Williams. Regina Hall was in it. And. As a part of the movie promotion, they gave out. <laughs> Peaches and cream hand lotion with Regina Hall on the bottle. Ain't this something? I've never used it, but I'm going to try, try to, hopefully it won't break me out in a rash. Uh, let's see here. Uh-oh. All right, it's still liquefied. Oh, it's a little thick. Don't have the best smell. Ooh. Ugh. I, ooh, what's it called? Peaches? I guess the peaches and cream sits in a box for too long. Oh, God. Where's that napkin? <laughs> All right, peaches and cream. Oh, goodness. All right. I'm telling you, I had a good time going through a couple of these old plastic containers. Uh... Then, uh, then the uh, movie Beauty Shop. This was the press kit for it. Who remembers Beauty Shop? Look at here. Golden Brooks was in it. My best friend Sherry Shepard was in it. Jaimin Hansu, Alfred Woodard. Um, who else was in this movie? Andy McDowell, Mina Saverni, Kevin Bacon. Alicia Silverstone, of course, Queen Latifah. Oh, uh, yeah, beauty shop. Now, this made me sad a little bit when I saw it. So, before I broke into the business, I was doing a lot of little local work. And, um, I, uh, think there's something. So, there was a woman here in D.C. who had a publication called Boss Magazine. And I did some freelance work for her. This was Boss Magazine. Her name was Chris Copeland. I really do miss Chris Copeland. She was a good woman. Um, so this is Jay-Z on the cover, of course. Uh, and an article on... Um, mm, mm -hmm, Chris Copeland. I miss Chris Copeland. Kelly Price and... Jay Z, um, uh, Charlie Wilson, and I did an interview on her for Shantae Moore. Shantae was not nice to me when I did this interview at all. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday. So, all the record companies used to have regional offices, uh, in like big cities. So, both BMG, which distributed all the Sony labels like RCA, Arista, Jive. Um, and about four or five others. Uh, they had offices, and right down the street from them was Universal Music Group, which had Universal, it had Motown, it had Def Jam, um, Interscope, it had all those labels. So, MCA, so one of the MCA, so Shantae Moore was signed to Silas MCA. So, her record company had arranged for me to come interview her, but I guess nobody had told her that. And so, uh, I came with my recorder, I sat down at the table, and uh, I said, hi, Shantae, um, I'm here to interview you. And she looked at me with this look uh, that uh, if she could have froze me and turned me into a statue, she would. And she looked to the person with her and was like, am I supposed to be in, uh, getting an interview? Should I be talking to him? And I was looking like, oh, she's talking about me as though I'm not sitting right here. And they were like, yes, Shantae, we're, um, you know, this was pre-approved. And so I started to ask her my questions. And the first couple of answers... She just was not feeling me. Like, she just did not want to be doing this interview. And because I used to read CD credits, I know that she was very active at a church in San Diego and that she had shouted her church out in the CD cover. And so I asked her about her church. 
And when I asked her about her church, she finally softened up a little bit. Um, I want to see if I make mention to the church in here. Um, probably not. But uh, let me read the first paragraph to you. It said, uh, it's not uncommon to hear an R&B or pop singer declare that he or she grew up in church and that the church provided a great deal of their musical training. However, it is rare to find a singer who achieves major success in mainstream music, yet still devotes time to and is actively involved in their local ministry. Uh... Oh, well, let me read some more. This was actually a pretty good article. Um, I said, Shante Moore has been singing for years, but garnered major attention in 1999 with the release of her single, Shante's Got a Man. That song became the topic and a key focus of many sermons and women's conferences in churches across the country. Preachers and speakers all profess, Shante's got a man at home, but she's shacking and it's a sin. Little did these preachers and speakers know that Shantae's man at home was actually actor Kadeem Hardison, her husband and the father of her four-year-old daughter. Hardison, the former star of the hit show A Different World, uh, and Shantae were secretly married several years before the song's actual release. Ironically, the two have recently filed for divorce. Um... Oh, and then, I, okay, and so, and here's the thing why I told you I asked her about her church. This is what she got nice to me. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, one relationship that Shantae has maintained along uh, with her R&B career is her relationship with God, a relationship that the songstress is both passionate and candid when speaking about. Shantae is a self-professed, quote, church girl. The San Francisco native even makes available the name and address of her church, Peace Apostolic Church in Carson, California, uh, in her CD's cover for her fans. Moore shared that she often gets in trouble by her pastor and church family for some of the clothes she wears while performing. When asked if she ever received any flack from some of the photos and clothes that accompany her latest CD release, uh, Moore humorously responded, Not yet, but they haven't seen everything yet, but I'm sure I'll get brutalized for something. I mean, the bathing suit is a bathing suit, and I would wear that on the beach, so that's not uh, one of them. But as far as the others, I have on a dress, but you can't see anything but my legs and my arms. So if there's a problem, there's just a problem. It wasn't my intention to offend anybody, so hopefully they're not offended. Um, and so, yeah, I went on to make some other stuff. Uh, it was interesting. Um, I mean, I ended up making uh, a great story out of it. Uh, but let's just say it was, it, just, it was not a pleasant experience initially. Now, later on, years later, Shantae would be very nice to me. Uh, when I would see her out and stuff. But, you know, a first impression goes a long way. And she made me work really hard for her to be nice to me. So, um, then, uh, I went to see a play called Love Makes Things Happen that David E. Talbert did. And it starred Don Robinson, original in Vogue and Lucy Pearl singer, Kevon Edmonds from After Seven, uh, comedian Joe Torrey, and my other best friend, Coco from SWV. Uh, look at here. That was a great show. David E. Talbert used to do Broadway quality productions. You know, it was good stuff. Then, these two young, wonderful young ladies that I grew up with, um, I found the postcard for their album that was coming out on Atlantic Records, Aries, Always Remember, A Yinka and A Yana Hips. We sang in a community choir called Images of Unity. These girls still look the exact same. They're some beautiful ladies, inside and out. Then I found a ticket from the first time I saw Gladys Night Live at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. That was a good show. It was that. Um, then I found a sign all the gonna take me out of here. Uh, David Pinckney, you are very shady. I need you to change your energy if you're gonna be around here because you say some things sometimes that can be a little bit inappropriate and I'm not necessarily uh, into all the uh, the curtness and the negativity so I need you to I need you to shift that if you're gonna be around here because you've made a few comments about a few people today and I've let I've, I haven't read them because I didn't want to necessarily address it but um uh, you just gotta, you need to fall back some, sir. Uh, 
But yeah, so and and and, and, and you know. And if your I am not means you're not going to fall back, then you probably won't last in this in this community very long. So, um, but on to more important things. I found an autograph person for somebody who mentored me through my teenage years. She was a legendary radio personality here in D.C. Her name was Marsha Sumner. It said to John, love you most much. Love, Marsha. It's back during our heaven for 80 years. Marsha also stopped speaking to me during these years because she got mad that I did not become a preacher. She was grooming me to become a preacher. And, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, decided I wanted to work in entertainment. One of the greatest deliverances I've ever had in life was being delivered from wanting to be a preacher. Um, and I found, <laughs> found my old senior picture from high school. This is my senior picture. Was it senior? Yeah, it's my senior picture. I still look kind of the same. That's me before I had hair. Um. Then I found this little vision board. Like it was more. I used to like to make collages and stuff, right? And uh, so I made a collage of like my my early years in the business. Um. So this was one of the collages I made. I'm going to try to point out a lot of the people to you on it. So, uh, that's Golden Brooks from Girlfriends. Uh, that's me and the R&B singer Sharissa. Y'all remember Sharissa from Motown? Uh, that's the gospel singer Natalie. Um, um, uh, Natalie Wilson. Um, sorry, I had a brain freeze for a minute. And that's uh, Trinice from American Idol, who's now on the road playing Donna Ross and Motown the Musical. Um, that's my younger brother, Cliff. Cool Cliff. He's, so la he's eternally laid back. Uh, that's Selena Johnson. Y'all see her sister circle now. Love her music. That's me and Vivica Fox. This is the day I interviewed Vivica Fox for the cover of Smooth Magazine uh, after her manager uh, did not want me to interview her. Uh, because she was going through the 50 Cent debacle. Um, that's Kim Whitley, one of my really good friends. Uh, that's me, Little Mo, and Kirk Franklin. This was at a BMI event in Houston. Uh, that's me and my, my buddy Chico DeBarge. I miss Chico DeBarge so much. Anybody know Ch uh, see Chico, y'all tell him I'm looking for him. That's me and Tamia. Me and Tamia used to talk on the phone all the time. She's an amazing human being. We just kind of grew out of touch, but when I see her, so much love. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to call Tamia tomorrow, just because I hope her number's still the same. Uh, that's my mama. Look at my mama. She's probably going to be like, I watched your Facebook Live. I don't like that photo you showed of me. Uh, that's uh, Amorosa in the early years. Uh, that's Coco when she went through her orange hair phase. That's me and her. Uh, what's funny was, on the other side of this photo, is her ex-husband. I had even cut him out back then. I don't know why I did that. That's uh, Will Smith. Uh, this is from a photo him and I took at the Black Oscars. Um, uh, that's Thea Vidal. Remember the comedian Thea Vidal? She had the ABC sitcom Thea. Uh, Brandy was on her show. That's Thea. That's my, one of my cut-up buddies. Uh, Thea is still doing comedy and she's working on a Carnival Cruise Line. So if you take a cruise, you might get experience the comedic laughter of Thea Vidal. That's Countess Vaughn. Me and Countess got some fun stories. Uh, that's my favorite R&B singer, Dave Hollister. Um, uh, that's uh, the late TV host, Bo Griffin. She was a good friend of mine. Exceptionally kind to me. You know, that was my, my friend. Uh... That's me and Eric Bonet. The first time I met him as an intern at WPGC in D.C., we were going to become friends. Eric is a good guy. Of course, that's me and Angie Stone. Angie Stone is coming to D.C. this week, and I need to call her. Uh, somebody said, is that Charles Butler? Oh, yeah, that's Charles Butler. That's Charles hiding behind me and uh, Countess. Um, uh, that's me and three of the original B2K members, Raz B., J Boog and Little Fizz. That's before Little Fizz, of course, did Love and Hip Hop. 
Uh, I think I pointed out everybody. Ain't that something? So yeah, you know. Uh, oh, and that's the uh, gospel singer Brent Jones. I did forget somebody. It's Brent Jones. Did I get everybody else? I think I did. A couple more things and then I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, so I used to make my brother play my photographer. And um, this back when you... <laughs> I used to have to go to Walmart get your photos printed, and I thought I was a model. So I went outside one day, had my brother taking all these photos with me. This is one of them, you know, little yellow wind-up cameras. Look at me. I thought I was doing something. I think that outfit was from Oak Tree. Y'all remember Oak Tree? And then um, Gladys Knight's daughter. Kenya had a cake store in Vegas called Kenya's Cakes of the Stars. And I found the old flyer that I used to have. I remember they sent me some cakes one time. Them cakes was good too. They had a um they had the Gladys Knight Pineapple Passion, the Patty LaBelle Socket to Me Cake, the Natalie Cole Luscious Lemon Cake, the Dion Ward Classic Chocolate Cake. And they had memorabilia. You could get all of those ladies' books and clothes and CDs and all kinds of stuff in the stores. Kenya Jackson. Um, all right, a few more things. I'm going to let y'all go for real. Um, if y'all like this, this walk down memory lane, we'll do this again one day. Uh... Postcard from Destiny's Child. Look at Michelle. Michelle. I don't think you're ready for that jelly. I don't think you're ready. That's something. Uh, from an album that would become like the soundtrack of my life, Rasan Patterson's Love in Stereo. Look at that. Hey, Rasan. I owe him a call too. Um. So my good friend Neely Dickinson had launched a label. Oh, this is a card from her. She said, John, I received the copy of Black Elegance, and I was so excited to see the review of Ted and Sherry. Thank you so much. You take such good care of us. Peace, Neely Dickinson. Oh, February the 11th, 2002. So she had these cards made, and on one side was the Melanie Daniels record that never came out. Hey, Melanie! Uh, and then it was... The amazing Ted and Sherry record that she put out. Look at Ted win. I see you, Ted. Looking like you should be in Arrested Development. Ain't that something? And of course, I had a postcard from. This was my. This was my day one. The very first celebrity that took a liking to me, that befriended me, and has loved me unconditionally, is Cheryl Coco Gamble of SWV. And this was from her Hot Coco CD. And I always held on to this because, you know, she loves me when I was a nobody. And, uh, uh, so yeah, those are some of my, some of my walk down memory lane thing. Oh, talk about a couple more things I'm going to let y'all go for real. I found some old, sing well, I'll do this another week. We'll do the singles another week, so. Um, so yeah, um. I just wanted to have a light, fun conversation with y'all tonight. Talk about some things. Show you some things from my past. I felt like, you know, this was an unconventional way of kind of walking y'all on my journey too. So, uh, we'll do it again in, the, you know, sometime in the very near future. Um, I'll be back next week. Um, and also next week is when I'm headed to Dallas. I will be moderating a music panel at the Pastors and Leaders Conference. It's me. Uh, and on the pan, I'm moderating Kurt Franklin's on the panel. Uh, Phil Thornton, uh, general manager of RCA Inspiration, is on the panel. Um, Catherine Bruton uh, uh, from BMI. Uh, she is the queen bee at BMI. She's going to be on the panel. It's going to be a great conversation. There's a few other people. I don't have the names in front of me. But if you're in Dallas, if you're going to be at the Pastors and Leaders Conference, come check me out. And... 
If you've had butt injections, don't share that with nobody else, all right? All right, if you're a member of a gang, keep that to yourself, all right? Um, and uh, I just live your best life and enjoy your week, all right? I always appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Until next week.